All right. Uh, thanks, Coach, for, for, for allowing me to do this tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Adam Ziemba. I'm an assistant varsity football coach at Richards High School in Oakland, Illinois. Um, before I get started, I'll give you guys my contact information, and I'll share it at the end as well. Uh, my email is adam.ziemba at chsd218.org, or you can follow me at Twitter at Coach Ziemba46. Uh, uh, tonight, we're we'll talking about defending the run. Uh, mainly, it'll be D line, D line and linebacker play out of the 3 3 stack and kind of just the stuff that we do. Uh, first, just want to talk about uh, our program. Uh, we are uh, a pretty successful program out of Illinois. We are 6A. Uh, we have an overall record, at least the last 10 years, of 89 wins and 27 losses. Uh, we made the IHSA playoffs uh, the last 10 years um, with 15 playoff wins, uh, eight conference championships. So we are 56 and four in our conference. Uh, four quarterfinals, two semis, and one uh, state runner up. Uh, I'm going to talk about defending the run. Like I said, I coach the defensive line. Um, I'm also our strength and conditioning coordinator with that. Uh, I'm in charge of stalling our run game. Uh, so therefore, when I obviously installing our defense run game plan, I work a lot with our linebackers and our linebacker coach. We do a lot of group uh, segments in practice. Uh, even our individual segment, uh, segments are usually merged with our linebackers. Um, so I work with them pretty much every day as well, as well as our linebacker coach. I can't forget to mention him, uh, Rick Brattle. Um, our philosophy on defense, especially in the box, number one thing that we hold uh, our hat on is, is stopping the run. And we kind of tell that to our kids day one in camp that, hey, if there's going to be anything that we're going to, you know, be super highly successful at, it, it is stopping the run. And it's stressed and drilled every day in all the things that we do, um, whether it's drills, whether it's in meetings, whether, you know, even in the weight room, uh, we talk about it. Um, we have a core set of drills that we do every day that we believe in. Uh, we do a lot of the same drills. Uh, these core drills from week one to week 14, if we make it to the state championship in Illinois, which would be week 14. Uh, we always talk about our kids doing the little things right. Uh, not only, you know, working hard, obviously, on the football field, um, but taking it to that next level of, you know, hey, you know, make sure you're watching film. Uh, you know, if you're going to watch film with us on Monday after practice, you know, which our D-line and linebackers, we get together um, – and I, you know, a firm believer of us getting it together. We have a team or a, you know, group segment meal uh, where we go over uh, the we go over the scout and report. Um, we, you know, go over different things and we draw up a lot of the, the stuff uh, that our opponents going to do. Um, and we do that again on Wednesdays and watch our practices. But we say, hey, you know, you guys got to do the little things right. You got to do those little things and make sure that you are. Uh, taking care of that not only you know on the practice field but in the classroom uh our drills that we try to do we always validate uh them by what they're going to do in the game and we show it to them film like hey you know we're not doing this drill just to kill time we're doing it uh you know for this purpose and here's why a lot of our drills are based on footwork uh we try to keep it simple um because in the end it's not what we know it's uh you know it's what they know so we have to you know, whether it's the language that we use or, uh, you know, the strategy, just keep it simple. Um, we talk about pre-snap reads. I'll go a little bit into that with our backfield sets, formations, and body language. Um, and then our key reads. Um, and I'll explain what that is, but we are a read, react, and attack uh, defense. And then, obviously, like I said, we practice, we review, and we wrap this every day. And we stress a lot of film or work with our kids. Film, film, film because obviously that doesn't lie. Um, here's our basic philosophy um, on our defensive line uh, with those guys first. Uh, we talk about our stance, um, alignment, and then footwork. Well, like I said, that's stressed by both positions every, every day. Uh, it is by far the uh, most important thing that I believe that we teach. As far as alignment is concerned, uh, we like to be in a credit card alignment. Uh, being, you know, a lot of these teams play, we play the stack, a lot of teams play the stack nowadays, uh, and, and you have to have your fast athletes playing. You have to be fast. Um, so we want to be in a credit card alignment, meaning, hey, the only uh, thing that separates 
uh, you from the line of scrimmage is a credit card. And I got that from uh, one of the coaches, I believe on the Saints, now Dave Dearden. Uh, he, uh, I saw that on a clinic and, you know, I, I, that kind of just snapped with me. And the kind of the philosophy of the credit card alignment is, is, you know, think about when you get into a boxing match with somebody, if you're off the line so far and you try to throw a punch, that's easy to block. But if you're, you know, right in their face and you show that quick jab, it's kind of hard. Uh, we talk about side steps and angle steps with our defensive line. Um, you know, the type of athlete that we look for to play in our D line, especially our DNs, our guys that had that quick first step that can get into that gap. And then again, just like the little things we talk about, we work on tackling every day. Uh, we call things out if they can. Um, some of times, though, you know, obviously you don't want your D line yelling a whole lot when the linebackers are trying to get the strength calls and all that uh, said. But, you know, if the defensive lineman is at that level, they could definitely call things out. Um, our linebackers, their philosophy, obviously, they're the QBs of the defense. Uh, they're the ones that are calling the strength, the adjustments, even the backfield sets. Uh, we usually want them to be playing at about four and a four, four to four and a half yards. Uh, sometimes, you know, situations will drop them back. Uh, we'll mug them a few times here and there as well. Uh, we want a good Z in their knees and a relaxed stance. Uh, we have a read step, just like everybody else. We call it a ta-ta. Um, that's where they're going to read their keys, and I'll go more uh, into that when I get to that slide. Uh, we play downhill. We're not side to side, so we're in attack mode. Uh, we tell our kids that, hey, to be in attack mode all the time. Uh, and we work on tackling every day. Uh, here are some of the drills that we do every day. Um, there'll be some more, you know, towards the end of this presentation, but uh, they're mainly read drills. For the D-line, uh, we do a rapid sidestep. Uh, we do a buckets and sh shoots, um, buckets, rips, chops, overs, and you can do these in the shoots as well. But I'll show you uh, diagrams of those in a second. And then for the linebackers, uh, we do some, a pull read, a pull drill, which is our, our key read drill. Uh, we call it. A, we also do a ta ta drill, which is a mirror drill that everybody does. And a lot of these drills you could do obviously with or without a ball. Now the first drill uh, is for the D lineman. Uh, we call this the rapid sidestep drill. Um, so on this diagram, you can see the orange circles. They're going to represent buckets. So all you need really here is three buckets. Uh, they don't need to be in pads for this drill. I mean, I'll do it. We'll do it week one to week, you know, whatever um, with pads still because this is done every day. Because again, we're looking for that muscle memory. Uh, we want this just to become natural as possible to them. So we get three buckets. Um, and they're basically going uh, to the right and left as fast as possible on a 45 degree angle. Uh, we're looking for these. This is a good way to find out who could play in the stack too, as well. Who has the first, that quick step. Um, we're looking to push off on that inside foot uh, with no fall step. So it's just going to look something like this uh, fast, especially if this was diagram, obviously uh, these guys are going to their right. Um, we're looking for low pad level. I, some, you know, we'll, put a towel at the side of it um, and they can do a you know rip um, we always say grab grass grass to ear hole um, you can even come back and do it again if, just to keep working on that feet so they're not thinking about it you can do a you know a chop over slab chop over or slap you know stab technique whatever you want to call it um, so that would be our rapid sidestep drill a uh, neck drill that we do is a uh, done in summer camp it could be done in pre-practice it could even be done uh depending on how big your, your team is um when your you know scout team is you know if your scout team is going and your starters are you know off to the side uh you can grab these buckets and kind of just go through some review sessions again um we do a buckets and shout um in the summer it's more for calling out techniques it's more done to call out positions um, but you could get, you know, more elaborate with it, but you could call out, you know, a stunt, maybe your whole D line stunt to the right or stunning to the left. You have these guys, all right, Hey, where are you going? What, you know, Oh, I'm going to a, you know, five technique. Okay. Hey, nose guard, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to this guard. Okay. What technique is that? Oh, I'm looking at that two eye. Okay. And so on. Um, it's just good to get them to, to, you know, recognize this. Obviously, you're going to teach this in the classroom, but it's another way to get that classroom out on the field. Uh, the next one goes back to the, the previous drill that I just showed you. 
Um, the sidestep drill, this is another way to get that sidestep and that muscle memory in. Uh, it's called the buckets and rips and chops. So again, now you're going to stagger the buckets uh, like the diagram. They're about five yards apart. Um, again, you're looking for that quick sidestep. We don't want a, fa a false step. Uh, we want that defensive lineman to get as close to that bucket as possible. So they're going to start off right there. Uh, we always talk about being very low. Uh, we want to have them always be below chin strap. Uh, and we're going to run through this, you know, twice, usually one time through with a rip, one time through with a chop over. Um, then you can even do, you know, a speed rush if you want. So kind of is going to look like that. Obviously, um, if you saw the diagram, I'll go back for a second. It's kind of squeezing. So after every time he takes that side step, that 45 degree angle step, pushing off on that inside foot, uh, he's going to do a rip, um, try to grab that towel. Um, and then he's going to squeeze as well because he's staying tight off of that uh, bucket. And then obviously that guy would do the same thing. He's just going uh, to his left, right, left, or whatever combination that you want to, to do. Okay, and then, like I said, we'll go through that one time with a rip. We'll go through that with a chop over. Um, you could even do this with linebackers if you want to, you know, work on uh, shocking and slapping and ripping as well. Now, the next one, obviously, is a drill that probably every linebacker coach in America has. Uh, it's a, your basic mirror drill. We call our mirror step the Tata. Uh, our linebacker coach came up with that many years ago, and it's kind of just been there, been like that for years. Um, what we're looking for is a quick buzz in our feet. Uh, so we call that a ta-ta. Um, we want to create, you know, the shortest time possible to read our keys, but we want to give them enough time so that linebacker recognizes what that offensive lineman is doing. Obviously, this drill, you just could use a kid or a coach, and you're just, you know, having your linebackers go through it, bam, bam, bam. Um, usually what we're doing is, you know, the, the coach will step to the right, left, right, or left, right, left, uh, switch it up. And we're just working downhill. We'll stop, we'll reset, stop, reset. And then on his last one, when he gets close to the coach, uh, as soon as he gets uh, past his hip, it's going to sit, squeeze, uh, and make sure that it's a nice squeeze. Uh, again, when you're doing your ta-ta, we don't want that you know, back step, fall step. We're looking to go downhill, and we want to play downhill fast. Um, pre-snap reads. So some of the things that we talk about pre-snap, um, it all starts with the strength. Um, our linebackers, uh, that's the most important thing that we need to do. We need to get them out of the habit of, uh, you know, uh, or start them in the habit of communicating. Um, then we look in the backfield, right? And this is only pre-snap. We don't want them to be staring in the backfield, uh, obviously on the snap of the ball, but we want to, you know, recognize how many backs there we're counting. If there's one, there's two, is there three? Okay. How are they lined up? Okay. So for instance, you know, if, is it, a lot of these teams, you could get an uh, idea of what they're running, especially with zone read concepts and QB power of how uh, the, the running backs lined up. So for instance, if it's a single back, is he behind, is he even, or is he in front? That could, indi you know, give you an indication of what types of plays uh, that they're in. Uh, recognize who's in conflict for RPO, uh, for zone read. Okay, and then who has who, and I'll go a little bit more in depth with, with those um, later on. Uh, additional pre-snap reads that we talk uh, about our, to our kids about. Uh, down and distance, okay? knowing down and distance. I use you know Madden references a lot sometimes to these kids saying, hey, you're playing Madden, it's third and seven. What do you expect is going to happen? And they need to know it. You'd be surprised. Some of our kids don't know these, you know, situational uh, downs. The hand placement of the offensive lineman, some old school stuff. Um, you know, is his, you know, hands, you know, deep into the ground. Is it light? Is he leaning? Right. Sometimes if it's light, he's pull. Uh, he might be pulling, or if it's pass, or if he's leaning, it could be a pull. So that can give us an indication of what's coming. Uh, obviously, that would be the body language of that offensive lineman. You know, we talk about those guys getting tired as the game goes on. Uh, back placement, like I just stated earlier in the previous slide, is the running back in front of the quarterback? Is he even? Is he behind? Is he wide? 
right? If there's two backs, we'll usually put a tag uh, to each one of those. Uh, what's the running back body language? Because sometimes the body language of a running back is going to tip whether it's passed or not. So we, again, try to show this to our kids on film. Um, I was explaining it earlier, um, you know, our Monday is our install day. And, you know, we go through our scouting report. We're probably in our scouting report for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, then we go out to practice and we have a short practice and we go through formation checks. And that's really when things start to, to heat up for us. We'll go through formation checks. A lot of the stuff that we learned in the, uh, you know, in the install and the scouting report, uh, going through our scouting report is now, you know, getting a first time visual of it uh, out on the field during that time. Um, we'll start, be, we'll start talking about backfield sets out there as well. We'll go through, uh, you know, special teams part of our practice. And then our guys on that Monday night, our especially our linemen and our, our defensive linemen, our linebackers, uh, we go and eat. And then we go through a lot of this backfield placement, draw up their top running plays. And I highly recommend doing that. Draw up your, you have your kids draw up, you know, a counter. Have them draw up, you know, a power read or a zone read. And you'll be surprised. A lot of them can't. Yeah, you'll, you'll be as a coordinator or a coach, you're explaining, you know, 50 minutes in a classroom, hey, this is what they're doing, this is what they're doing. But, you know, it's just like being in a classroom and, and, and you know, you got to make sure that you're hitting all types of learning styles. Um, our basic key reads, so the basic keys that we we read, um, defensive linemen, if we're going to the right or left, we're keying the nearest, our nearest threat, meaning the lineman that we're going to. Our linebackers, we're always keying the guard and then to the near back. So this is all basically on the snap of the ball. Okay, And obviously sometimes, uh, depending if we're playing like a wing T team or something, uh, we're going to change possibly their read. But for the most part, we're reading guard to back. And here's just kind of an example. So in this uh, situation here, we have our defensive line. We're slanting to the left. Uh, we're looking, uh, obviously our linebackers are looking at the guards and then the square box represents uh, the side that's in conflict uh, for RPO or zone read. Obviously, these guys need to communicate to each other. Uh, hey, you know we're in conflict, and we're going to have a whole set of rules uh, that that are going to be now installed because we're in conflict. And I'll go into that a little bit farther. Uh, here's how it looked if we we're slanting the opposite way. Uh, now the defensive end on the weak side, he's going inside. He's going to read that guard, that nose guard. You're going to read uh, the two eye, reading, reacting to that guard, and then our defensive end going outside. He has no tight end, so therefore he's going to react to that outside shoulder, that five tech. And then this would be if you had both ends jetting out and going outside. Um, here's some. Extra drills that we do, one-on-one uh, -on -one read drill. Uh, you could do this with your D-line and linebackers. We'll do this in our group segments um, or even in our individual when we get together. Um, it's done every day. Again, this is creating repetitive memory. Uh, we want to react fast. So we want to eliminate as much thinking as possible on the football field. It covers all the basic blocks for the that a D-lineman and a linebacker will see throughout the season. So with this drill, you can have a coach and a, a, a defensive lineman doing it. You could have a coach, a defensive lineman, and a linebacker doing this, or you can have you know up to five total people doing this. And I'll show you in the diagram. Um, again, you know, try to cover as many blocks that these kids are going to see and rep it every day because the, the the less that they think, the faster that they're going to play. And especially in a stack when that's geared towards having the you know your fast athletes on the field. Um, we will have the defense ram react, uh, react to blocks that he sees if he's stunting inside and outside. So we'll go through this, you know, both ways. Uh, maybe for like the, we'll do, you know, two reps each inside and then two reps outside. Um, and like I said, you can always do this with your linebackers behind, and you can even throw in a guard key for them so they're reacting to the guard. Uh, and it, to me, I think this is a great drill that we do. Uh, for reading keys and working linebacker near step. So, for instance, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so these are the four blocks that we'll, we'll go over every day very quickly. It's rapid, it's nice and fast. Um, this guy will be usually the coach. You can throw in an extra player to represent the guard, and then you have your DN and your backer. 
Um, if you're going inside, obviously the first block is, is seeing a, a, a down block from the guard. Right, if we as a defensive end get that, hey, you're, that's a gift. You're getting an open door read basically going through here. So we tell our defensive end not really to mess with the tackle. Don't worry about the tackle getting your hands on you. Uh, you make sure that you're getting through that gap as fast as possible, getting to that guard and getting upfield. Obviously, you got to protect yourself because you don't want to get washed down. But don't worry about that. Don't dance with that tackle. Get into that gap. They're giving it to you. And if you can cause penetration within the gap, uh, you're going to you know, disrupt that whole play no matter what, right? even if it's a counter coming back. Uh, the linebacker, he's just doing his ta-ta, so he's reading, uh, buzzing his feet. His defensive end is going inside. So um, – with some of our rules, the DN goes inside. We're kind of slow flowing because obviously if you're in conflict, uh, you know, it, it they're, they're looking at you for the RPO and they're going to react to you. So you, we want to freeze that quarterback a little bit. Um, the next one is the pull. Obviously, DN's going inside. If he gets a pull, just grab on a hip pocket. That's going to take you to, to, the, to the, the runner. So we usually just get in there, grab the pull, and you're sprinting with that pull and then getting upfield, finding that, that running back. Linebacker, again, because your defensive end is going inside, you're going to do a Tate mirror step. Uh, you could, if it's a pull, obviously, we want you getting over the top to the opposite A gap. Um, if it's a running quarterback, uh, we want you to slow flow. So it really depends. And slow flow, what I mean by slow flow is you're, you're not jumping over because you're technically responsible uh, for that C gap. So if there's anybody pulling it on a zone, uh, a counter or a zone read, uh, that's your, you're responsible for that. Uh, obviously, the next one, third one, a defensive end is going inside. Uh, he's going to feel the double team. So maybe he's on the back side of his own read. All right now, this is where. You have to work to your way to get skinny, fight pressure with pressure. Again, DN, uh, our linebacker behind him, uh, mere stepping Tata, uh, working to get over the top. Uh, and then the last one, obviously, is pass. They see that, you know, you're working your best pass rush move and getting upfield. So we'll go through that rapid fire, uh, almost in, you know, in a straight line at times. Uh, if it's the D line, just the D line, if it's the linebackers, um, you know, a little bit different, but you can do it with both position groups. Uh, then we'll go to work in the outside moves. Um, DF defensive end, if he's going outside, uh, now the linebackers rules change a little bit because um, obviously the end would be responsible for the quarterback on any pulls or zone reads. Uh, so the first one, defensive end's going outside. He sees that down block. He's going to squeeze. Uh, then obviously he's going to stay square, squeeze, eyes on the quarterback, uh, staying square the whole time, not turning his shoulders. Uh, the linebacker is working to get over the top, find the open door playing uh, downhill. Uh, the end over here on the next one with the pool, he's going outside. Uh, again, he's going to squeeze just like the down block. All right? Years past when we're, we weren't playing as many running quarterbacks as, as, as we do now, uh, you could have chased that pool just like you were going inside. But now, you know, we all know that, you know, they'll, these quarterbacks are going to be pulling sometimes on these counters or counter reads. Uh, so now, again, you have to treat that almost like a down block. A uh, linebacker in this case, you could be a little bit more aggressive because your defensive end is going outside. Uh, game plan pending, obviously, uh, depending on who you're playing. But if we're playing more of a team that's a counter team, uh, you can be aggressive with that pull and get over the top and chase that pull and get to your opposite egg. Yeah. A defensive end of the base, obviously base technique. Uh, he's taking one step. He recognizes that he's getting pressure. He's got to close this, this uh, B gap from, from opening to help out his linebacker. If it's done correctly, hopefully that defensive end gets his uh, inside hand uh, right on that guy's chest, controlling him, his outside hand with his, his outside hand and pushing him back um, and push, hopefully closing that B gap, uh, making that, you know, a little bit easier. You're going to obviously see that base, see that base block and a lot of ISO type plays, maybe an ISO G with the guard pulling. Uh, and then obviously the last one, it's a simple pass. But again, this is done repetitively. You try to get as many reps as possible with these kids uh, so they get used to seeing these blocks. Okay. Uh, the next one 
is a pull drill. We'll do this with our linebackers, and then you can throw in your defensive line in as well. So usually when we're doing this, uh, these two red guys are representing, you know, two of your players, and then you can put a bucket representing the center. So uh, the two red guys use two players, or you can use two coaches, depending on what you have or your situation, and they're going to represent the, the guards. So for this top uh, image, this is more for your Mike linebacker. Um, he's reading those guards. He's reading that traditional triangle. Uh, we want them to have that tata that we were talking about, buzzing their feet, uh, reading their keys. Um, we don't want that linebacker to stare in the backfield. So we kind of just get him in that habit of, you know, a lot of the kids that, especially on the varsity level, uh, you know, it's sometimes harder to break some of the bad, the habits that they had from, you know, eighth grade and maybe they carried it up, carried it up through freshman and sophomore year. Uh, when they get to the varsity level, you don't, we really don't want our guys staring a whole lot into the backfield. We want them to be making sure that they're reading their keys. Um, so for the first diagram, again, like I was saying, that was more for the mic. Uh, we want you to play attack and play downhill. Uh, this is going to be similar to some of the run fits that you can do in your group segments. Uh, and then obviously you can add a ball carry if you want to each one of these drills. So the top ones first, obviously uh, showing um, the guard pulling and the other guard double teaming with the nose. So if you're that Mike and you see that, obviously working, getting over your open door would be uh, into that A gap. And then you would be sitting down chasing that pool. Uh, the next one. On the bottom, you could now you could throw in your your outside backers, uh, your Will and your Sam, and you can train them. You can even throw in your nose guard here, and you can work in uh, your nose guard. So we'll have my nose right here, we'll have my backer here, and then you just have a bucket, and then uh, you as a coach or an extra kid, um, you know, representing the guard, and you're just working on. Oh, he sees the pool. Okay, in that case, you know, you call the stunt where your defensive line's going left. Linebacker reads the pool, is getting over the top. You could also do, uh, you know, a different variety of ways. You can have your, you know, uh, line slant the other way, or you could throw in a different block. Maybe it's the, the guard is going out, so this linebacker sees this out. He goes outside, this nose guard. Uh, if it was the same stunt that we were doing previous in the diagram and they were moving, you have that nose guard just chase that, that out like, you know, a DN would chase that pool. So you can do a lot of different things with that. Uh, conflict drill. This is another drill that we do a lot with our uh, DNs and linebackers. Uh, we see a lot of zone read. Uh, so the way that we kind of attack zone read uh, is kind of old school option rules. Uh, who has who? Uh, we call it cross key um, to, to you know, figure out who's in conflict. Um, obviously, in this situation, the way that I have it set up, is I have a coach right here, I have two buckets set up, and then I have a player and a player here. Uh, this player is going to be told, hey, you know, you're going to be down blocking, and then we're going to, you know, either give or keep uh, as far as zone read is, is concerned. So the first time I'll say, hey, I call having the defensive end get inside. So they're going to communicate to each other. Hey, I have, you know, I have died, I have quarterback. Um, so that old school option uh, rules that I was talking about. The defensive end is going outside. He's going to turn around and say, hey, I got quarterback and the linebacker, you know, you're going to respond, hey, you know, I got dive, right? If you're going inside, especially defensive end, you're going to try to attack that mesh point. Um, if you're going outside, remember, you know, you, the defensive end is going to see that down block. He has to make sure that he squeezes. Um, and then, again, all those uh, rules, especially if the defensive end is going inside, that linebacker has got a slow flow. Um, when we see pistol, uh, that might be a question that a lot of people see a lot. What do you guys, you know, what would we do when we see pistol? Well, both sides technically then are in conflict. They're not tipping their hand. The linebackers or the running back is, you know, not offset from the quarterback. So they're not tipping their hand uh, on that. So both sides are in conflict. So a lot of those rules are both going to be communicating uh, pre-snap. Uh, one of the last drills I'll, I'll show you guys before I get into some film is uh, another drill that we do 
Uh, this is backfield recognition, and when we'll do this after we do our run fit in our group segment. Uh, this is kind of very similar to the very first drill that I talked about earlier where I had them yell out techniques. Now we're going to be just yelling out backfield sets and tendencies. Again, going back to what we were talking about and how our box meets on Monday nights and we meet on Wednesdays, and we go through our tendencies. We call this out. So, for instance, you know, we have a pistol plus one. We'll tag it. Uh, our team tags it. Um, Tebow, um, you know, we just get a tendency out of that. Hey, this, you know, this team, they like to run these top two plays out of it. So, hey, call it out. All right. And then, you know, all these orange things and these black dots, they're going to be cones or buckets. And then I, as a coach, if there's a guard pulling on a play, I'll just represent the guard, but we're going through it really quick. So I'll set up, you know, pistol plus one. I'll set up pistol. I'll set up, you know, whatever backfield set, whether it's two back, one back set. And we're calling it out even, and obviously we'll have our adjustments or whatnot in that. And again, just getting more mental reps uh, for these kids to not think on the football field, but just to react. Uh, and then obviously we'll call a stunt, we'll run through it and go through our run fit as, as well. Um, how we defeat some of these plays, right? So here would be counter your you know old school counter GT, guard and tackle pulling. Uh, in this case, our, our defensive line is slanting to that left. So that defensive end, he's going inside. He's reading that guard. Okay, so, hey, he's, he's getting a gift here. He, he's got a pull. Obviously, he can't mess with that tackle. Uh, he needs to get in there fast. He's credit card to line. He has that great first step. Uh, he's chasing that pull. Nose guard, unfortunately, in the stack. Obviously, you guys know that. I was going to see double teams a lot. Uh, that's why you have to have a great nose guard, I believe, in order to have this defense be extremely successful. Uh, and then obviously the weak side end, uh, he's going to nobody, so he's reading that five technique, and he's got to recognize, oh, i got to squeeze it. So if he does it correctly, uh, this Will Backer is going to, you know, ta-ta, attack that open door, and if the DN closes it and uh, squeezes, he should be working his way over the top. Um Obviously, here would be another example of this, the D-line going the opposite way. So this time they're going to the right. So the defensive end, he's going to that three technique. Okay, He could disrupt this whole – if you have a good defensive end with a great inside move, he obviously can disrupt this whole counter GT and this whole pull scheme by getting upfield and causing those pullers to go back um, and you know making a new line of scrimmage, basically. Uh, that nose guard, obviously going to the 2i. Uh, his guy is pulling now, so sometimes depending on what type of nose guard we've had, uh, some years we've had uh, you know guys that could have been linebackers playing there. Uh, other years we've had short wrestling guys. Um, depending on what type of athlete you want to put at that nose guard, usually we try to put someone really with a really quick first step. You could teach them to do a punch over, or you you can uh, teach them if they're fast enough to get into that a gap to just you know, redirect and chase that puller. And then obviously on the back side here, on the strong side, defensive end, he's going out. He sees this pull. He has to squeeze and then eyes on the quarterback just in case that quarterback decides to pull it on a counter GT. And then obviously our Sam, uh, he could, you know, he, his defensive end is going outside, so he doesn't really have to be worrying so much more about the RPO or even the quarterback pulling it, he could kind of play uh, the pull. Here's an example of some film of a couple years ago in a playoff game. Um, all right, so this call, defensive line is slanting to the left. So you can see our defensive end. He's reading that uh, tackle. He's squeezing. He's going a little bit too far upfield for, you know, to make it perfect, but he's not doing a bad job. He's recognizing that he has to squeeze. Our Will Backer is doing a great job of doing exactly what we were just talking about in that previous diagram. He's starting to attack that, that B gap. Um, yeah. Attacking that B gap and then working his way uh, over the top. Also in this clip, if you take a look at the Mike linebacker, that's actually was our one of our other starting defensive ends. Uh, in but we had a situation in that game where we had to he had to start, unfortunately. But you know the way that I look at it, a lot of our defensive ends are basically line uh, linebackers that can't drop in coverage at times. Now, granted, he could have played 
linebacker the whole year. He was that that good. But you know, that's just an example. A lot of these reads are they all relate. I'm trying to get the end zone view of that. Um, of that view, which I believe I have. So here it is again, showing that defensive end. He's going outside. He's going to squeeze. All right, that Mike linebacker, he read that triangle. So, again, validating that drill that we talked about earlier. So now, we, you know, validating all the drills that we talked about, that one-on-one -on -one drill with that defensive end and that linebacker, that uh, number 34, that will. And then this Mike linebacker recognizing the triangle, all right, and working to, <laughs> to get himself over the top. Watch it one more time. He could have did a little bit better of going down angle, but you know he, he did a great job for a kid that didn't have much experience playing linebacker. I believe now this clip is the defensive uh, line going the. No, it's the same one, right? So this this clip will have the defensive line going the opposite way. To so now, I believe we're slanting to the right. And again, uh, the, the weak side end here, he has a great first step. So he's getting inside uh, and, you know, he's disrupting a little bit the pull. You know, not perfect, but he, he's got that first step where he's causing a little bit of explosion. That uh, Will linebacker, since he knew his defensive end was going inside, uh, he's attacking that, that C gap right away, um, you know. On the opposite side, and we have that defensive end. Uh, you know, he went up a little bit too far upfield, but if you watch, he knew his rules. Uh, he's looking at the that his eyes are right on that quarterback. So on that pull, he, his eyes were locked in on him. He checked to make sure that he didn't pull. I think they pulled it a few times uh, that season, so he was highly aware of it. And here's the end zone view of that. So again, both all these drills are getting validated here now on film. Okay, here's uh, recently uh, last season um, a counter GT. So a little bit different uh, guys playing for us, but again, here's defensive line. We're slanting to the left, and you can see the same kid uh, that was yeah, playing DN uh, going inside from last season. Going inside, disrupting up that pull, right? causing every cause causing that whole play to, to, to be shut down. And then the, the backer on that strong side doing a great job of, of working his way to get over the top of that that block, attacking that C gap. And again, that Mike linebacker, again, reading that triangle, again, that drill coming into effect. Here's another play that we saw a lot last year was the power O, kind of the same concepts as well. This time defense flying slanting to our left. Against the, def the strong side defensive end, chasing that puller, getting penetration, getting through it. Backside defensive end on the weak side, seeing the down block and he's squeezing. We had a stunt going on with our, our sandbacker, so he kind of took himself onto the play. But if you look at the mic again, he's reading the triangle, getting over the top, and, and making a heck of a play as well. And a good job by our will. Here's another uh, power row that we saw. Again, this time our defensive line is slanting to the left. Thanks. You can see the top, the strong side defensive end. He's chasing that puller, All right, taking him to the running back. Uh, our weak side defensive end, that was the guy that was actually just playing Mike Linebacker uh, in the previous clips with against the team in the uh, red and yellow. Uh, he had a tight end this time, so he's working to get to the tight end to protect himself by keeping his eyes inside. Uh, 
Here's another power O. Uh, I believe this is from this season, actually. Defensive line is slanting to the left. And again, you can see that defensive end on the weak side, getting through those pulls, causing disruption. The Mike linebacker, number 23, doing a heck of a job of reading his triangle, getting over the top. Again, all those, those drills that we just talked about uh, going into effect. Thought I had an end zone view of that. I guess I don't. Here it is later in the game. Again, try, they're trying to run uh, power O against us. Again, and this is a team uh, we beat week two. They ended up being in the 5A state championship. So a pretty good football team. Just showing you again, defensive line, we're slanting to the, to the right. In fact, the strong side defensive end was our – our uh, will back her a lot this season, uh, but we threw him down at defensive end. Um, he's dancing with the, the tackle. In theory, I would have liked him to, to get a little bit farther uh, inside because the call was slanting everybody to the right. But he does a great job of, of beating that tackle and pushing him back. Uh, here's – so uh, the zone read, obviously, play that everyone sees. Going back to that uh, that conflict drill of who's in conflict, uh, kind of just showing you guys, again, validating drill with, with film, which we try to do a lot. So in this situation, uh, we have one back, so the rec rec defense should recognize that we are in conflict on the, the weak side here. So uh, we'll call our strength, obviously, based on the hash to the, to the right. Um, so our will and our uh, weak side defensive end would be the ones in conflict here. We have our stunt coming uh, with our will. So, you know, it's not the perfect clip, but again, our defensive end, he's going out. And if you could watch the bottom weak side defensive end, he's going outside. He could have squeezed a little bit tighter, but he was obviously trying to protect himself because he had that yo. Um, but he's got his eyes on that quarterback, squeezing it back. Here is another zone read. Again, a weak side defensive end. And uh, is, is they're slanting to the left D line. Uh, the strong side defensive end and the, the Sam are in conflict here. As you can see on the, uh, the strong side defensive end, he gets that down block on this clip and he is squeezing. And then the um, Sam attacking his gap. And again, that was a great play by having a good nose guard, a really good nose guard as well. He ends up making a great play on this as well. All right, ripping, getting through, causing disruption. There's a zone read from uh, earlier this from this this season. So again, you can see more of a natural look of it. So the weak side here is in conflict. Defensive end is going inside, so you'd have the dive. And if you can see our uh, our weak side linebacker on this clip is going to attack uh, the quarterback, making sure he's doing his job. A great play by our Mike. There's another zone read from, I believe this was from the playoffs this year against Washington. And now our defensive line, I believe this, uh, both the ends were going out on that call. But if you watch the bottom here, I he recognized him going out. I have Q, looks for the Q, saw that, that he didn't have it. So then he, he played it. 
Uh, here is a wham ISO. Um, so again, now that defensive end, they're going to see that base block. So in this case, it looks like the, the call is having us go to the right. The defense to then up at the top, he's going inside. He sees that he gets a down block from the guard, so he's attacking. He has that open gift that we were talking about. Don't get washed. All right, and he makes a great play. Again, not worrying about that tackle washing. And obviously, if he felt pressure, he'd have to rip and get upfield. Again, here's another uh, ISO type play, call it wham. Uh, this time you get that true base block from the, the defensive end. He's attacking, holding that tackle, pushing him back, and again, allowing for those linebackers to fill uh, on that. And I believe we stunted our backer right into that. Uh, here's a trap. Again, you're just going to see the same things with the reads that we were just talking about. And that trap or that puller took him right to the, that DN to the, to the, uh, uh, to the play. Um, that's all I got for you, coach. I apologize for kind of the end there uh, with the, with the video clips. But again, uh, if you guys want to get a hold of me, uh, my email is adam.ziemba at chsd218.org. Uh, my Twitter account is uh, coachziemba46. So hope you guys get something out of it. Um, and good luck to you guys uh, for your upcoming seasons.